The universe. Huge. Big. Kind of dark and scary. Especially if your name is Ripley, Bowman, or even Wilco. Here's a guy whose last name has more than two syllables. The Space Quest Historian. I'm the Space Quest Historian, and I'll bet you thought you got rid of me, huh? Well, you didn't. Um, anyway, I have got a very, very special treat for you today. Um, I've already shown you uh, bits and pieces of the fantastic fan games that have come out uh, of Space Quest since Sierra stopped making Space Quest games, like like Space Quest Incinerations and uh, Volhall Strikes Back, and uh, not to mention Infamous's brilliant reinvention of Space Quest 2. Um, but what you never got to play, and what I'm about to talk to you about today, uh, is what would and should have been the greatest fan game sequel ever known to sentient beings. Space Quest 7. No, not that Space Quest 7. Um, Space Quest 7 was officially in development at Sierra before it got cancelled and everyone got fired. And uh, uh, But after that happened, fans were in such a rage that they decided, fuck it, if Sierra's not going to make a new Space Quest game, we damn well are. So, an intrepid band led by charismatic leader Colin Davis set about to create the ultimate fan game sequel. Check this shit out. Space Quest 7, the fan game, was not going to have any of the dodgy elements that the official installment was touting, like multiplayer mode and uh, isometric 3D perspectives and aliens with cigarettes and... Well, actually, that part was pretty cool. But uh, all of this shit that Roger Wilco didn't really need in the first place. No. It was going to be a kick-ass 2D classic adventure game. And it was going to have a, an awesome pedigree of talent and it was going to be made with such care and quality it was going to knock the socks off of anyone wearing socks. So what happened? Well, here's the interesting bit. To take you on this journey... To take you on this journey, it is my great pleasure and with great pride that I am able to introduce to you the brains behind this venture, Mr. Colin fucking Davis. Hi Colin, how are you? What the hell are you doing in my computer? Oh well, I borrowed a trick or two from the Space Venture intern. Let's just say his days of alarm clock intervening are over. So anyway, Colin, how did Space Quest 7 come about? Alright, so yeah, Space Quest 7, sure. Um, well, uh, about 12 years ago, uh, you know, a lot of people were on the virtual broom closet and, you know, we were, we were reading when the news came out in Interaction Magazine that looked like Space Quest 7 wasn't going to happen. You know, we, we saw the interview with Leslie and, you know, like a lot of people, I was just really hurt. And, you know, it was, it was really sad because I'd been looking forward to this game. I loved the Space Quest games. And, you know, I, I came into the, the, the forum and, you know, I started talking about it. And it's like, you know, this is, this is really unfortunate. What can we do? You know, what can, can we like write letters? Can, what, what can we do to try to fix this? But one of the things that uh, I had suggested and we started talking about a bit was, okay, can we like make our own game in the meantime? Because I mean, you know, Space Quest 7's got to come out eventually, right? They're, it's Space Quest. They're going to release it. It's just going to take a while. Um, so, uh, you know, it's like, well, all right, well, maybe we could do something, you know, maybe we could like get stick figures and, you know, I don't know, like do some AGI art or, you know, work it out somehow. But I started talking to people and I thought there was like this big community which was already working on this project. I, I, I sort of got the wrong idea. But in, in some ways, I was sort of helping to put together a community which I thought 
already was working on it. So, you know, I was talking to Brian a lot, and uh, there was a guy, Gene, who, uh, you know, sort of was taking point on this a bit. And we, we started gathering people together, and I, I created a website and a forum, and, you know, we, we had, back in the day we had a mailing list. And it was sort of like, all right, guys, come on. So what are you working on? And what are you working on? And I started talking to people, and I, I pretty quickly got the impression that, you know, I wasn't organizing, like, an existing project and helping it. I was, like, building a new thing. So, sure, yeah, we can do that, okay. And, you know, I talked to Gene, and, and he basically said, no, I, I, he never really, like, wanted to get involved in a big thing, so he stopped working on it. And, you know, Brian and I were really putting this together, and, you know, we had so many good ideas. You know, Gareth was doing a lot of great writing, and, you know, we, we got uh, Maz, who was doing some uh, some 3D art for us, and we were really starting to build something cool. Um, you know, so then sort of the next question is, okay, well, what are we actually doing, right? Like, how are we building this? What is, what is our great plan? So that's what we sort of had to start figuring out from there. So, when you had decided to make Space Quest 7 the way that the fans wanted to see it made, you uh, somehow got some official help in creating the story, am I right in this? And, yeah, it, it, sort of during this time we, we were trying to figure out, alright, well what do we do now? Right, um, and we were trying to give like people and divide things up and give roles, and you know, uh, Gene had uh, gotten an email and he, he forwarded it off to me and he said uh, you know, that Josh was interested in getting involved with the project, and uh, he had said that he might be willing to write some click events, you know, like when you you click on a background and it says, you know, you can't do that, or you know, that's preposterous, that would cause a huge explosion, or whatever else. So. Um, much funnier, though, because Josh is cleverer than I. But anyway, um, you know, he had written that, and that was so generous. I mean, you know, I, I, I was so excited. We'd be able to get Josh, and he would help us write some of this background stuff, and it would be great. And then Gene issued a forum post saying, here's the official positions, and Josh is lead writer. And I, I, I was like, what? And Josh felt similarly what, but he's such a great guy and he was so good that um, he agreed and he said, okay, I guess I'm lead writer. Great. Okay. So then he was lead writer. <laughs> um, so then uh, after that, uh, he and, uh, and JC and uh, Diane and I actually all met up at a Johnny Rockets in uh, in New York and you know started going over story ideas and you know sort of like all right well what are we going to do you know how do we how do we build this thing and you know for me it was a real geeking out fan moment but you know it was also serious because we were trying to build like a great thing and you know sort of like, okay you know how are we going to get together this story and how are we going to try to build things hugely you know how are we going to continue the Space Quest legacy So, and this is the part we're all dying to know, what was the story actually going to be? Actually, yeah, the story is really cool. Now, one of the things Josh had talked about is that continuing a Space Quest story as fans is really kind of different than building it as if we're Sierra. You know, we have a different set of, of constructions and a different set of liberties. So, one of the first scenes that he had really... All right, <laughs> all right, stop right there. I'm afraid I can't let you continue with this video, Trells. What the hell? Josh Mandel? It's pronounced Mandel. What? Uh, seriously, how are you doing this? Is my computer just completely open to anyone who wants to butt in at any time? Yes. Yes, it is. And, and Colin, you know damn well you can't reveal the story. No one can ever reveal the story. No one must know the story. I alone have the story, and it will never escape from my lips. Not even under threat of... Torture and duress. Uh, no, no one's gonna torture you, Josh. We just wanted to know what's gonna happen after Space Quest 6. Well, Roger's still on the deep ship, and, um, then he goes to the thing, and I got his. Actually, the truth is, <laughs> I don't remember. It was so long ago, I have so many plots going on in my mind, so many ideas I rejected, so many ideas I considered, and this is good. I just don't remember, all right? It's been a long time, okay? I don't remember. So you, now you don't have to ask about it anymore. And then um, at the end, though, stuff happens that no one 
no one will know about, not even if you poke me with hot sticks. Well, okay. Well, as long as you're here, Josh, um, could you at least talk about your experiences of uh, coming aboard the project? Well, after I awoke from the Mickey that Colin had slipped me, hey, I went that was our little secret! No, no. What happened in the hotel room afterwards was our little secret. And don't worry, okay? I'll get you another chicken. You said you wouldn't tell anybody now, about that. as for Space Quest Seven, I don't remember. Okay, very insightful. Um, so, with the plot developed and the project underway, um, how did you go about bringing this fabulous thing to, to screen? Colin? Yeah, I can take that one. So, we started off using a, uh, an environment called uh, Aghast, which is an adventure game engine. You know, it, it was really cool at the time because you could do so many things. It, it wasn't sort of locked down in the way yeah, a bunch of ones were. It, you know, you could run it uh, in Windows. It worked really well. But as we started working on it and programming and actually like getting into the game elements and started really writing things, it was rough because we, we kept running up against limitations that would be so easy in any programming language. But because we needed to use the built-in script utilities that it had were, you know, it was just like what the writers of Aghast had come up with. It wasn't a full environment. It, it, things were so hard over and over, and we keep running into these walls where it's like, if I was writing in any programming language, if I was writing in BASIC or, or Python or, you know, if I was writing in Java or C Sharp or really any other language at all, this would be really, really easy. But instead, we need to jump through all sorts of hoops. So what we decided to do is we, we took the, the ideas from that that we liked and we re-implemented those as a Python wrapper around uh, Pygame. And the idea was just, all right, this is going to be a thin, light little thing. You know, we're going to make it really simple and quick and we'll really get into it. And we, we wrote uh, some cool features. Uh, we, we wrote a parser that, uh, you know, would go through and anything you typed, it would uh, do some natural language processing and try to figure out what you meant, extract the nouns and verbs, you know, like click on rocket and... Uh, uh, you know, or, or uh, lick rocket, and you know, from there it would sort of feed it into the engine and get the relevant revo results. And um, a feature I really liked about this engine is we uh, we made it so that when the writers were working on things, you could define an element, and then it would just put up like a huge list of boxes for uh, click events, and it would say, well, what happens if you lick it? What happens if you pick it up? What happens if you you know try to uh, uh, combine it with other things? And it would use these big empty boxes to try to really ensure sure that, you know, all of these responses were in the game, and it, it really sort of forced the artist to try to, you know, or the, the uh, writers to try to put in a lot of click responses, which is something that I've always really loved. Um, so we got a bunch of really cool art. You know, a lot of this, I, I went to forums, and I was basically begging and saying, can you please help us? But, you know, as word spread, you know, other people sort of came to us and said, hey, you know, I, I grew up with Space Quest. I love Space Quest. How can we get involved? So, you know, we started off with uh, Maz, and, uh, you know, we, we just got a whole bunch of uh, artists. Colin Panetta did an amazing job doing so much of the concept art. Um, and, you know, we just sort of kept building. Uh, we went through, we, we laid out all the storyboard stuff in 2D, and then we just started going through scene by scene by scene and, and recreating in 3D, and recreating the inventory objects, recreating, you know, the background scenes. Um, now, the game was, was 2D, even though it was rendered in 3D, so we created sprites for, you know, here's Roger walking, etc. And, you know, we, we got a lot of people involved, and that was one of the most fun parts for me. It was getting all of these people to help build something really fun and really amazing. Thanks, Colin. Um, Josh, uh, coming off as the uh, uh, semi-official, if not official, uh, third guy from Andromeda, what was it like working with fans instead of a, a, a corporation, a company, in, in trying to bring back Roger Wilco? The differences between working on Space Quest Six and Space Quest Seven were were huge. I mean, Space Quest Six, the company was was shifting. There were new managers coming in all the time. Uh, a lot of the staff was being moved to Bellevue, so uh, it was chaotic and it was disorganized. And um, things were changing all around you all the time. Staff was changing, uh, uh, budget, circumstances, everything was changing. Now. Working on Space Quest Seven with fans, on the other hand, uh, you know, with with Colin organizing it, it was um, it was disorganized. It, 
it was it was chaotic. You know, people were constantly coming into the the project, leaving the project. You know, the budget was nowhere, and schedules were up in the air, and it, it was it was really very different. Oh, well, well, this is all very interesting. Uh, but what I'm dying to know, and I suppose everyone's dying to know, is what happened to all this stuff you did. Uh, as I remember, you got about 80 or 85 percent into actually having a completed game. 80 to 85 percent. Before it all somehow went down the shitter. Is that right? Yeah. Um, that, that wasn't great. Uh, so... Basically, we ended up in a situation where uh, Vivendi Legal, uh, who uh, you know was in charge of the rights for Space Quest, said, "Hey guys, yeah, you can't do this." And we said, "Well, uh, what do you mean? And, you know, this is this is you know we understand it's not official. We write unofficial right on the title. Um, you know, it'll be fine. You don't even own the Space Quest trademark anyway." And they're like, "Yeah, but we have an exclusive license, and you can't use it. And also, even if we don't, the characters are based on our characters." And we're like, "All right, fine. We'll call it Schmodger Schmilko." And they're like, "No, you can't do that. It's still based on our characters." And we're like, "Uh, maybe it's not." Now, like, look. You guys don't have a legal fund, and we have more lawyers than, you know, you have friends, so you're kind of screwed here. You just shut it down. And we're like, ah, man. And, you know, we, we talked back and forth. We, we talked a lot to the uh, the King's Quest fan group, and, you know, uh, eventually we were able to talk to Sierra, and, you know, we talked to a guy there, uh, Rod, and, you know, we, we worked out a deal, and, you know, I thought it was, uh, it was okay. It wasn't great, but, you know, we could, we could maybe live with it. So they said, all right, here's what we can do. If you can turn over all the copyright on this game to us, so we own it, uh, and, you know, we can commercially sell it, we can put it on DVDs, we'll put it up on Steam, then, you know, okay, maybe you can write this game if we approve it. And I'm like, well, I don't love it, but um, okay. You know, we'll see what we can do. And I brought it to the team, and uh, we had a lot of conversations about it. We talked it over, and uh, nope. We decided that wasn't going to happen. Uh, there's a number of people in the team, not just one, you know, but uh, uh, like at least I think four people who said, "I'm really interested in doing this on a, a fan game basis. Uh, I, I, I'd love to to help with this. If we're going to release it, I'm really excited." But I, I can't just turn my work over to Vivendi for free. You know, they're a huge multinational corporation. I can't just you know say, "Here you go. You can sell my work. Don't give me a cut." And they just weren't okay with that. So we stopped. Um, you know, and I respect that. Uh, we, we made the choice that was best for the project and best for the, uh, the circumstances. And, you know, it's one of those things. Um, I wish we could have released it. I wish that, uh, that Vivendi had said, hey, yeah, you guys go ahead. We haven't worked on this game in years and years and years. You know, we're, uh, we're happy with whatever you guys want to do. Or if they had just, like, decided not to look at it, it's just like, I don't even know. Are you making a fan game? Who knows? But, no, they, they weren't big on that. So we had to put it on the shelf. So where is all this stuff? Where did those 85% end up? Well, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to just publish a, a binary, because even now, years later, they'd probably get all pissy about that. And frankly, I really don't want to be sued. Uh, you know, I don't want to lose my house, I don't want to lose my car, I don't want to go to jail. So all of those are things I'm not looking forward to. But I want to try to put out as much of the work as we can. So, you know, one of the things I'm doing with SQ7.org now is I'm taking a lot of the old material and, you know, sort of posting it up there. And I'm excited about that because there's stuff that, you know, I worked on and I'm proud of. And so many other people worked on is the thing, you know, and, and all of this work shouldn't just be sitting in an archive someplace. And, and frankly, a lot of it's getting lost. I mean, you know, this is years and years later and I don't always have all of like the uncompressed originals anymore. And, you know, stuff is just disappearing. So sort of the idea there is I want to start posting stuff while it still exists, while the people are still around who can comment on it, and I want to try to post as much as possible and share it with people. So, Josh, what are your thoughts on ever seeing an official Space Quest 7 again? Honestly. What? Space Quest 7 today? I think um, if, uh, if you were going to try to 
do something like that today, you'd have to, you'd probably have to go straight to Activision. I mean, there's, you can't get away with it on the sly anymore, like some of these fan games did where they kind of, you know, stayed under the radar. Uh, you have to be honest with them, you have to tell them you've got the story, you've got the, uh, you got the people, uh, you got the schedule, you've got, uh, uh, you got some elements that are going to make it more acceptable to today's audience rather than the audience 15 years ago. And, um, you know, someone's got to do it sooner or later. Uh, I just uh, hope it's not me. Well, um, thank you both for your insights. Um, not at this all. This has been great. Well, i I, I got to get back to work on, uh, on the new Leisure Suit Larry, uh, which, by the way, you guys have to check out. Because you know it's going to have a lot of Sierra references in it built right in. It's gonna it's gonna be something that I think uh, Sierra fans are really gonna like as well as hopefully a whole new generation of fans. So anyway, but I'm watching you, Trails. I'm watching you. Don't ever forget that. Um. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, hey, uh, Space Venture Intern, have you got anything to add to this? Mm -hmm.